Hello, I am back with another broken vessel. The Holy Spirit still feels broken vessel Bible study. I'm going to come from three or four scriptures today, but first I want to begin with prayer. Jesus, I come to you humbly asking you to bless this study, to bless those who come to hear a word from you. Bless those, Lord, who are sick. Bless those who are bereaved. I know that one of my co-workers, Miss Tina Dorsey, she lost her husband. Bless, Lord, and take her through this time of bereavement. In Jesus' name, bless as she's grieving the loss of her husband after such a long illness. Bless all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones at this time. Bless those who are sick. Bless those, hallelujah, hallelujah, who are shut in. Bless those in Jesus' name who are having difficulties in their minds, in their spirit. Lord, that I know that you are the lifter of their heads because you have lifted mine. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And thank you, Jesus. The scripture, my first scripture that I want to read from today is from 1 John chapter 2, and it's verse 12. And I want to talk about changing your mindset of how you think God sees you. I had to do that for myself. I had to change my mindset of how I thought God would see me to what the word says God sees me. And 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So that's the first thing we need to remember. Our sins are forgiven. So when we come to Christ, we're baptized in Jesus' name. We receive salvation with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We repent of our sins that's the main thing. We have to repent of the sins. When we do that, he forgives us of those sins. He died on the cross. He took the sin of the world to the cross and died for them. So our sins are no more. They are forgiven. He forgave you of your sins. Your sins are taken away. We don't have to carry them anymore. It goes back to the scripture again. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. We don't have to continue to pick them up. But me, I always thought that when he looked at me, he would see my mistakes. Every mistake I would make, that's what he would see. He wouldn't see just me. He would see any mistake I would make. Just like people in my life, they would see a mistake and not see me. So I would project that onto God. Every time I made a mistake at home, my mother would see the mistake. So because of that, I would project that onto God. 
And that's one thing we have to remember, that what we have in our lives, what we've learned from parents, from siblings, and other people are things we don't have to project onto God because God is not like man. He is above man. He's different from man. He's better than man. So I would always think that God is like the people in my life. If they saw a mistake and would magnify the mistake I made, well, God would be the same way. If I made a mistake, he's only going to see that mistake. So my life was filled with, I can't make a mistake in church. I have to do everything correct in church. But I don't have, I didn't have to live like that. My next scripture would be, we are a new creation in Christ. And that comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Going back to what I was saying about we are now new. Our old sins are passed away. God has cast them in the sea of forgetfulness. So we're new in Christ now. We don't have to think about what was done before. Those past hurts, we can cast them away. Don't think that they're not going to come back. Because the enemy is going to come back and talk to your mind. He will. I had that happen myself where triggers came and it reminded me of my past hurt. See, they rejected you just like your father did. But I had to use my tools, my tool of prayer my tool of going to the word, seeking God when people were not there. And then I did have to seek people, go around your church family, let them know I'm struggling. I need you to help me get through this rough time. Pray Stay in your word and get around the people in your church to let them know, hey, I'm having a rough time and I need someone to talk to. These are your tools to stay ahead of the enemy because the enemy is going to come and try to talk to your mind to tell you that no one cares, but you have to fight back with prayer, with the word of God, and being in the presence of God's people. Don't isolate. Don't stay alone. Get in the presence of God's people. And my last Scripture is found in Ephesians, and that is chapter 1 and 5, that we are adopted. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He has adopted me into the presence of his glory. I am part of the kingdom of Christ. I am Christ's adopted child. I used to think that he loved me 
just because I was in the world. The scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So I was in the world. He loved me. So he had to love me. But now I have learned that he loves me because he formed me before he knew my name, before he formed me in my mother's room, womb. That is from Zer Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I was formed in my mother's womb, he knew my name. So he loved me, particularly me, my name not just me as being one of the billions of people in the world, me. And he adopted me into the family. And not just me, but you too, you out there that's listening to this, that's watching this video, he loves you too. Jesus Christ loves you. And he's waiting for you to come to him. Wherever you are, his arms are open. He's waiting for you to come unto him. He is calling for you. And if you already know him, don't leave. Be encouraged. Stay in the race and don't give up. The race is not over. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. We still have a long way to go. I hope you have been encouraged by this short Bible study. And I pray that it has encouraged your heart and your mind. And I will be back again next week. And I pray that you will join me in Jesus' name. God still uses broken vessels.